Reggie here, and I want to welcome you to another one of my videos. It's been some time since I've done a how-to video. Certainly a long time since I've done a how-to video on shipping, but today we are going to do a video on that topic. I'm going to show you my methodology for shipping large amounts of raw comics safely and securely. This is a methodology that I've been using for the last couple of years. I think it works incredibly well, and my hope is that you'll be able to leverage it as well. Stay tuned. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at some of the materials and resources that we are going to need to make this magic happen. The first thing that we're gonna look at are a couple of boxes. And I use these boxes for a few reasons. And these are boxes from the United States Postal Service. First and foremost, the boxes are free. Uh, well, taxpayer funded free boxes. Uh, they work together really nicely. And most of the uh, shipping apps that I have used over the years have these sizes, these dimensions already loaded to their system. And at present, I use a platform called Shippo, which is integrated into my e-commerce platform. But I've used ShipStation, which is associated with PayPal in the past. And I've also used Pirate Ship. And, and I do believe that all three of those platforms have these boxes loaded to their system. So it saves you a little bit of time because they're pre-populated. You select them from the drop down and then you are ready to rock. But we have two box size is here and both of them are important i use the medium flat rate box and this is actually basically the square box the dimensions are you know uh 11 and a quarter by nine by six that's the dimensions of this one it, it if it fits it ships that's basically one of the benefits of these flat rate boxes the second box that we're going to use is this one this one is the large flat rate shipper and uh, this one has the measurements of around uh, 12, 12 and a fourth by 12 and a fourth uh, by, by six. And uh, again, you'll see momentarily how all these fit together. The great thing again about these flat rate boxes is that if it fits inside, you can, you can seal it up, you are good to go. And I think the max weight for the large is 70 pounds. So you're going to need some boxes to, uh, to get things going. The other things that you will need include some bubble wrap. And I'll show why that's important a little bit later. You're going to need some kind of cutting utensil. I tend to use a box cutter just because they're, they're easy to, uh, to use. Uh, you're going to need some tape. Reach off to the side here. I am a huge fan, huge fan of, uh, of this stuff right here. Uh, saran wrap, food wrap, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I've been using this specific box, uh, 3,000 square feet for the last couple of years. Stuff is amazing. My wife gets it for me from uh, from Costco. And like I said, I've been using it for quite some time. I, I use a lot of saran wrap and you'll, you'll see why here momentarily. The other thing that I like to use if I have some on hand is this scrap material from CGC. Uh, I've been repurposing CGC boxes and box material for years. And if you've seen any of my shipping videos previously, you know that I'm a huge fan of repurposing some of their material because it's free, it works incredibly well, and, and why not? So I'll show you how I use this corrugated cardboard here in just a little bit. So the next thing you want to do is to assemble your medium flat rate box. And the assembly is relatively straightforward. There's no, no real magic here. Uh, you close the flaps down. You shoot one piece of tape lengthwise and one piece widthwise. In my opinion, that's more than enough for, uh, for this box. And, and I'll show you and I'll contrast that to what I do for the large box in just a second. But the inner box here is relatively straightforward in terms of its assembly. So the outer box, the large flat rate box is a little more involved and I take a little bit more time with trying to uh, tape this box up because it's going to get the brunt of the abuse if there is any abuse. And so with this box, what I like to do is to shoot one piece uh, lengthwise uh, to close down the two flaps and to hold the two flaps down closed together. And then I'll shoot uh, another piece widthwise, I'll shoot one lengthwise, and then I'll shoot another widthwise and then lengthwise. Part of the reason why I do that is I'm almost layering the, the tape onto the box. It honestly might just be a psychosomatic thing, to be honest with you, but I do it because I believe that maybe it adds a little bit of uh, structural integrity to the box instead of just having all the tape going one direction and then 
the other direction, I kind of lace the different, um, the different layers of tape. So again, it could be completely psychosomatic on my part. So you want to get your boxes all set up, all taped up and, uh, and then set those boxes to the side. So because we are going to be shipping comics, we of course need to have some comics. And this is where the saran wrap comes into play. Essentially what I do is I use the saran wrap to create a brick of comics, basically a sturdy little bundle of comics. And there are an infinite number of ways that you can do this, right? You can have half the books in here, have the spines on the left, the other half with the spines on the right, or you can do what I do, which is to put all the spines on the exact same side. Uh, it is personal preference. Uh, when it comes to uh, putting the saran wrap on, there's also uh, some personal preference there. You know, sometimes what I'll do is I'll pull the saran wrap out and then I'll basically roll the comics uh, spine over over inside to kind of seal them up. Other times I will hold them this way and I will basically roll them uh, top of the book over the bottom of the book. And, and it just depends upon how I'm feeling. It depends upon how many books I have. It depends upon the size of the book. Sometimes when you're sh shipping books, you have different size bags and boards. You have different ages of books. And so you're going to have to kind of mix and match the approach that you take. With this one, with both of these bundles that are here, I basically just pulled the saran ramp out, had the roll sitting there, and I basically just rolled the books. And I used the excess and kind of sealed over to the side. But at the end of the day, what you want to end up with is a couple of bundles of books. And this is about 30 comics or so. I could probably fit a lot more in the box, but for the purpose of this demonstration, I wanted to keep it relatively straightforward I've sent a lot of comics this way and they have all knock on wood arrive safely so saran wrap is a great way to go the other thing that I'll mention here is that you can also flip over the top book so that the backing board is facing up that way you give a little bit of extra protection in the event that something hits the top of the box or the top of the stack. Uh, at the end of the day, the goal is to try to take every possible measure to allow your bundle of comics, your box of comics to arrive at its destination safe and sound. So you have to do what actually makes sense to you at the end of the day. So the next thing that we want to do is I like to actually use new bubble wrap. I'm not a huge fan of repurposing bubble wrap for this next step. I, I like to use new bubble wrap. And uh, if you guys watch my videos, you know that I believe that bubble wrap is like a blanket of love. But what I will essentially do is like I did with the saran wrap, I will basically roll the comic bundle inside of the bubble wrap. And I want to basically create a little bit of a blanket around this comic. And there are a couple of ways you can do this. You can do each individual stack separately, or you can wrap the first stack just a little bit a few times with some bubble wrap, and then you can set the second stack on top of it and then just continue wrapping around that. And, and again, at the end of the day, you have to do what makes sense. You have to look at the amount of, of uh, product and inventory that you have on hand and do what makes the most sense. So we're gonna just wrap these two bundles together. Uh, I purposely, I, I, I don't see much benefit in adding uh, additional tape here. So I'm not going to do that uh, because the, the bundle will, will essentially keep itself together, but you could certainly add another piece of tape or something like that if you wanted to do that. But in the end, we basically have two bundles of comics wrapped in saran wrap, surrounded by a blanket of love, also known as bubble wrap, to create this wonderful brick of comics inside. Okay, so the next step is to pull out our medium flat rate box. Pull out the medium flat rate box. You can pull your flaps down so they remain out of the way. You can then take your brick of books and you can carefully drop them inside. And if you see that, they fit incredibly well in there. Again, that was uh, over 30 books and there are still a couple of inches between the top of the, uh, the books and the top of the box itself we have a, at least two and a half inches of room left so we can theoretically fit another let's just say 30 some odd books in there i don't know where that number came from <laughs> we can we can fit a lot more books in there uh, we're not going to do that for this purpose but the point is that this this approach gives you a tremendous amount of packing space 
I typically don't put anything else inside the box on the sides because the sides fit relatively tightly to the comics. And so I don't feel, again, a need to shove anything else down in the side. You have to do what makes the most sense for you, but you have a lot of room in this box. So to that point of having a lot of room in this box, and we're not going to fill that up with more comics, I'm going to set that off to the side. And I'm going to grab uh, some of this, this um, cardboard that I have set to the side. Again, this is some of the cardboard that comes inside of a CGC shipment. We're going to repurpose this stuff. We're going to repurpose it a little bit. And I'll show you how here in a sec. I'm going to cut off the pieces what you'll notice is that the because this is folded to fit down in the cgc box you have a break here and you can actually cut down that break and it uh works incredibly well if you if you cut straight that is that was not a very good cut as you guys may have noticed uh but but when i'm doing this for real i will cut it much more cleaner than that but essentially what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut a piece of this corrugated cardboard and i'm going to place it in top in, in the inside this box on top and because it is corrugated this stuff is pretty tough but what i like to do is basically score it on each side and then snap it and it comes off relatively cleanly that fits it fits it ships so there you go i have now given some extra protection on the inside of the box and now i can close this box up and again when i normally do this if i'm shipping it this way i will pack this box full of comics i will add a lot more in there and, and if i do have that extra space i will use a piece of the corrugated stuff or i will use some extra bubble wrap if i have some bubble wrap laying around so i think this is a new piece of a new roll of tape but we're gonna uh, we're gonna simulate this just a little bit. I'm gonna put a strip of tape on this thing. And again, I I don't typically do a lot for the inner box. Um, I normally just do again one strip that way and then one strip that way. We're we're not gonna do it because we're just we're kind of simulating it here. But essentially, what I've done is created a pretty sturdy inner box. And I say inner box. Because this bad boy is about to go inside of the large flat rate shipper. So we pull over the large flat rate shipper that we assembled a little bit earlier in the video. I want to fold down the flaps of that. And if you remember, the dimensions of both of these boxes is basically six inches tall. Each one is basically six inches tall. So when you drop it in there, if your inner box is packed properly, it should be equal to the size of the outer box. In the event that it's not, there's also some things that you can do to make it fit. <laughs> I've come up, I've come up with all kinds of scenarios. So you now have your outer box. You can fold it down. You will need to apply a little bit of pressure to the outer box to make sure that it closes down because they are roughly the same size. But you can basically close it down. You can go ahead and you can layer. You know your tape the same way that we talked about a little bit early in the video now what's great is because the two boxes are about six inches they will to some degree or another hold together they will kind of hold together even though there's a lot of space on the sides of this box they will kind of hold together but but if you want to take some extra caution if you want to take some extra caution you can go back to using uh your your corrugated cardboard again from cgc or or i think cbcs sends out something similar you can go ahead and uh, mark it you can score it see if we can make this right that was i just did a rough eyeball there see if that works snap that off and drop that down in the side now we've got a little bit of uh some added protection on that side Get a little bit of space on this one. See if we get this one right. I'm gonna score that. And these lines are all crooked. I know, I know it's not the neatest, but when we do it real, we we get it right. So you can basically use your uh, extra cardboard here, and you can kind of wedge it, kind of wedge it around your box to again give you a little bit of extra cushion in there if you feel like that's something you need. Again, you can close the box up. So you can do the same thing if you don't have some corrugated uh, cardboard. Like I just showed here, you can actually take some bubble wrap. You can fold up some bubble wrap. And I say fold it up because you want to have a, a nice appearance to the box. At least that's my belief. If people are spending good money buying comics from you, you want to have a good impression. Uh, don't, cut your, don't cut your stuff 
like that. <laughs> don't don't do it the way that I did it here on the flight. It just that's egregious. Uh, but but th this is a solid methodology for um, for being able to 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 bundle up some books. And and I'll demonstrate. It's a little bit of some used bubble wrap, clean clean bubble wrap and tape free. So you can kind of roll this up and you can kind of jam it down in the side. And again, at the end of the day, uh, no one's ever going to complain if you send them a bunch of bubble wrap. Now, what you don't want to do is to stuff this box full of trash. I've received boxes from people where it's like, you know, pieces of tape are in there. It's the... The, the 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 strip that you peel off when you seal down an envelope or something like that all kinds of stuff just thrown in there I, I don't do that i try to make sure that when a box shows up it is as presentable as possible but this is essentially a, one method for being able to securely ship a large amount of books now i have shipped books directly in the large flat rate shipper i feel like that inner box gives a little bit of extra protection two layers if you will of cardboard two boxes give me a little bit more confidence than just a single box uh, but rest assured that if if uh, ups fedex united states postal service wants to damage your box they're going to damage it but again you want to take as many precautions as possible to ensure that this book or this box can arrive at its destination in in good shape so there you have it that's that's the methodology that i've been using for the last couple of years i uh, hope that you guys found this video helpful and if you did i certainly want to encourage you to share it with your friends share it with the community give it a thumbs up leave a comment behind take care rapper, rolling, rolling.